Okay, Luke chapter 18. Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart, saying, In a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect men. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect men, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect, who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? All right. So if an unrighteous man would respond to persistent pleas, will not God? God will respond to those who truly love and follow him. Of course, if their pleas are in alignment with his will. He then makes a statement about the condition of mankind during the period before his return, which will be marked by persecution, apostasy, and unbelief. Verse 9. And he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and was praying this to himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other people, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing some distance away, was even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breasts, saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Verse 15, And they were bringing even their babies to him, so that he would touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they began rebuking them. But Jesus called for them, saying, Permit the children to come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. All right. Desperate and dependent attitude again. And here's a verse some people point to that alludes to all children going to heaven if they die before the age of understanding or accountability. There are good resources available on this topic. And my understanding of scripture is that God will accept all children to heaven if they don't reach the age of understanding the gospel. And the same thing goes for the mentally challenged. God is a just and fair God. Verse 18, a ruler questioned him saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. And since this guy only acknowledged Jesus as a teacher and not as deity, Jesus was not denying who he was, but was challenging him based on this guy's unbelief. Verse 20, you know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack, sell all that you possess and distribute it to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. But when he had heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. And Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. Because most who are wealthy, not all, rely upon themselves for provision and become prideful and arrogant. Verse 25, for it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They who heard it said, Then who can be saved? But he said, The things that are impossible with people are possible with God. Peter said, Behold, we have left our own homes and followed you. And he said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive many times as much at this time and in the age to come eternal life. 
Verse 31. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things which are written through the prophets about the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be handed over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and mistreated and spit upon. And after they have scourged him, they will kill him. And the third day he will rise again. But the disciples understood none of these things, and the meaning of this statement was hidden from them, and they did not comprehend the things that were said. As Jesus was approaching Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the road begging. Now hearing a crowd going by, he began to inquire what this was. They told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he called out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet. But he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded that he be brought to him. And when he came near, he questioned him, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, I want to regain my sight. And Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following him, glorifying God. And when all the people saw it, they gave praise to God. Okay, well, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for being the great provider, not the provider of our salvation, uh, giving us um, everything that we need in the day, starting with your word, uh, food, shelter, running water. Lord, we don't take these things for granted, and we just want to say thank you. Uh, we need these things, and we ask that you keep providing for us. Um, Lord, in our study today, you say to pray and not to lose heart. And I want to pray that we don't lose heart. I want to pray, God, that your spirit would fill us with um, excitement for what's to come in your kingdom, um, to be full of zeal for your word and to be uh, in zeal to share it with others. Lord, I know in this world right now, there's a lot of crazy things happening and injustice and um, uncertainty and but in the midst of it all, Lord, you're you're a solid rock, a foundation for us to cling to, and thank you for that, um, Lord. This uh, Greg Floyd situation, you know, I know that uh, in, you said that in this world there would be trouble, um, that th there's going to be sin and injustice, and um, but we do want to pray for those who have broken hearts, the family of of Mr. Lloyd. Um, you know, you call us all to love one another and clearly people don't believe in you, disobey you, don't follow you or make up their own traditions and theories of who you are, uh, which is idolatry. And, um, we know these things exist and it, it's hard. Uh, but that was the whole point of you coming and taking that sin upon the cross. And that one day, uh, well, first of all, that sin, we, we we're grateful that that sin was taken care of on the cross. Um, and we know, and let us re remind us, Lord, to trust that one day you're going to make all things right, that there, there is going to be justice. There is going to be a judgment day. Uh, people are going to be held accountable for what they do, um, both on the sides of the law and, uh, pedestrians, just regular folk. We, all men are going to be held accountable and so we pray for everyone that people would know you and become intimate with you and place their faith in you and repent, um, which is the, the only solution is to, um, to emulate your son, Lord. And we pray that more and more people in this world would bow the knee to you and would understand true love, true peace, and true harmony in you, God. And we continue praying this. Please help the leaders, the, the decision makers, um, those in charge, the police. Help people to start making correct decisions. And uh, uh, until you return, Lord, we pray for help. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, thank you so much and uh, hope to see you tomorrow. God bless you.